Hello, guys. Go let your friends know. Tell some friends. Come visit. Today. Ooh. Damn. Maya. Mayo is just like, he's just not really a human being. He's like, he just bleeds this, these rhythms. Like he doesn't need to think about it. He doesn't need to practice it. He just sits down on the drums and does this for as long as you let him. He'll do it. We were walking through a... Um, like shopping mall in America somewhere and he'd grab things and just be tapping on like the the furniture tapping on the merchandise we were in, we were walking out of the mall and he was like started to like do it on like the he he couldn't help but touch like the crystal and the glass and the china run his finger over it and make a noise and we were like yo aren't you like, how do you get around in life without, like, breaking shit all the time? Just tapping on everything. I feel like he's going to knock shit down. Just always make it up. I've got crazy um, uh, allergies today, so pardon my sniffling and all that. Um, but, yeah. We're going to have some fun over this. It's just... So, basically, what happened was Mayo, when he was in L.A. at one point... Uh, we recorded him over, uh, let's see, it was a 102 beat per minute, like, click, so it stays on the grid, but we just, over, the only thing that was going on really is we would, sometimes I'd play a few, like, loops and stuff, and he'd just play along. This was originally written over a loop. I got rid of the loop for today. Um, it was very, like, dark, kind of jazzy, actually, and, um, just left the drums. So this is just Dan freestyling for four minutes or something crazy, five, without a single skip in the beat, a single like screw up, he just went. Um, and yeah, so I figured I'd just write over that, like not even really, not even change it, probably. I don't know, we'll see. Grabbed a couple sounds, not that many sounds today, just a couple. I might go and dig for a couple more if if, uh, if we need it. But um, yeah, that's where we at. Um, let me just turn him down a tiny bit more. And um, we're going to, real quick, I want to look at the, the, the bowl and look at our redemptions. We got uh, some folks who have redeemed um, here on Twitch. Redeemed some some Shinoda bucks. Um, oh, I think here I have to log in real quick. There we go. Let's see if we've got. I didn't write any new ones down. Okay, so I might have to get those. I'm gonna have to get you guys who have uh, redeemed stuff. I'll get you in the chat uh, later. But just a reminder, we do have new things in the uh, redemption um, box. You can redeem. Um, Suggest a music theme for tomorrow. You can redeem, suggest an art theme. You can ask a question. And then uh, if you get enough points, enough Shinoda bucks, you can redeem uh, a follow on Twitch. So I'll follow your channel on Twitch. Um, there's lots of good suggestions here in the bowl. Uh, should we do, uh, before we get started, should we do a, a draw, draw two things? Oh, the Myers-Briggs test. You guys wanted me to do a Myers-Briggs test. I still have it up on the screen before we start. You want to do a Myers-Briggs before we start? Should I turn the beat off so we can do this? Okay, hold up. I'm going to turn the beat off. Okay. The beat is off. We're going to do a Myers-Briggs because this was a um, this was a request. Um, why did we end up wanting to do a Myers-Briggs test? 
Why? Why? No, this, they said it'll only take a few minutes. Ten minutes? If I had done it. I know that I had done it before. Um, and I was, I was somewhat extroverted. Uh, Fifteen minutes? All right, how about this? If we have time at the end of the thing. If we have time at the end. I want to do, yeah. Fifteen, twenty minutes. All right. Somebody asked me to do it for 400 Shinoda bucks. Oh, that's what it was. No, don't do it at the end. Okay, you want me to do it now? Okay, so Myers-Briggs test, a personality test. Um, you basically, uh, you'll get a sense of what it is before we're just right when we start here. Um, okay, so I'm going to do a live Myers-Briggs test. That's really amazing. Question one, you enjoy, oh, by the way, so you, here's the question, and then um, you go between, you know, um, there's like a scale of like, on one side there's agree, and on the other side is disagree, and then you do your thing in the middle of it or whatever. Um, can I just like, wonder if I can just like, <laughs> Is there anything like here and here? All right. All right. So um, Myers Briggs says, um, do you enjoy, I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get, get through this quickly and that'll be more, it'll be more, uh, uh, I won't overthink the answers. How about that? Um, I'm going to go scale of one to seven, I guess they've got here. So share the screen. I know I want to share the screen. I'm just concerned about the stuff. I don't have any, any stuff on the screen that I, you guys can't see. Hold on. Let me see if I can do it in. Oh, I I've got an idea. Hold on. I know how I can share the screen here. Uh, hold on a second. Let me do it this way. Maybe I can share a screen. Okay. Okay. okay wait, I can share a screen. Okay. I can share the screen. I'm going to do it this way. Okay. All right. So, Myers-Briggs test, huh? Let's see. Let's get it into the window here. So, here's what their, this is what the 16 personalities one is. Oh, great. They're going to, like, tell me if I'm, like, a diplomat or a sentinel or, oh, boy. Whatever the fuck. Um... You enjoy vibrant social events with lots of people. Uh, I'm going to say mostly. You often spend time exploring unrealistic yet intriguing ideas. Oh, fuck yeah. Your travel plans are more likely to look like a rough list of ideas than a detailed itinerary. Um, I'm going to go there. You often think about what you should have said in a conversation long after taking place. I'm going to go, yeah, very much so. If your friend is sad about something, your first instinct is to support them emotionally, not try and solve their problem. Ugh. Probably a little more problem solvy. Uh, I'm going to go there. People can rarely upset you. Uh, I'm going to be in the middle on that one. You rely on other people to be the ones to start a conversation and keep it going. No. If you have to temporarily put your plans on hold, you make sure it is your top priority to get back on track as soon as possible. Are you guys doing this with me? Uh, do you want to? I'm a talker. It's not being a talker. It's just that I don't require somebody. You can't do, you can't do even like what I'm doing right now without like a little bit of just like instigating it, right? I'm not a master conversationalist i'm just i'll just talk about with people about stuff i don't need them to tell them like to to direct the conversation if you have to temporarily put your plans on hold you make sure it's your top priority to get back on track as soon as possible yeah rarely worry if you made a good impression on someone rarely worry Ooh, no it would be a challenge for you to spend the whole weekend by yourself without feeling bored 
No, it would not be a challenge. Wait, without a challenge without feeling bored. No, you are more of a detail oriented than big picture person. I'm going to be in the middle on that one. You're very affectionate with people you care about. Yes. No, I'm going to go back to one. I'm going to go back one. I could be more affectionate. You have a careful and methodical approach to life, probably. Still bothered by mistakes you made a long time ago, sometimes. Parties and similar events, you mostly be found farther away from the action. Actually, yes. Yes. That will surprise a lot of people, but that's true. You often find it difficult to relate to people who get let their emotions guide them. Mm, yeah. When looking for a movie, you can spend ages browsing the catalog. Meh. Stay calm under a lot of pressure. When in a group of people, you have no problem jumping right into their conversation. Uh, kinda. When you sleep, your dreams... I don't dream a lot, guys. I'm going to go super far over here from that one. I don't dream. I almost never remember my dreams. I mean, I'm sure everybody dreams, but I don't, I wake up and I don't know what, I just wake up as if it was a time warp. I didn't like, I don't remember anything I dreamed usually. It's okay to step on others to get a, what kind of shit is that? You're dedicated and focused. This is like a Slytherin that turned into Pottermore. Uh, you're dedicated and focused on your goals, only rarely getting sidetracked. I get sidetracked a lot. If you make a mistake, you tend to start doubting yourself. Yeah, a little bit. In a social event, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new... Uh, uh, let me go here. Um, usually lose interest in a discussion when it gets philosophical. You would never let yourself cry in front of others. Well, let yourself. I just don't really cry. That's a weird thing, right? But it's just, it is what it is. Uh, here, I guess. Feel more drawn. I'm going to go higher, actually. You feel more drawn to places with a bustling and busy atmosphere. The more quiet. Uh, no. You like discussing different views and theories in the world look like the future. When it comes to making life-changing choices, you mostly listen to your heart rather than your head. No. You cannot imagine yourself dedicating your life to the study of something that you can't see, touch, or experience. No. You usually prefer to get revenge rather than forgive. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You often make decisions on a whim. Yeah. The time you spend by yourself often ends up being more interesting and satisfying than the time you spend with other people. No, not really in the middle. You often put special effort into interpreting the real meaning and the message of a song or movie. Yeah. You always know exactly what you want. Middle. You rarely think back on the choices you have made. I wonder what you've done differently. That's a tough one. Maybe a little bit. The public place, you usually stick to quieter, less crowded areas. Yes. You tend to focus on present realities rather than future possibilities. Not really. Um, you often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. No. When starting to work on a project, you prefer to make as many decisions up front as possible. Yeah. When you know someone thinks highly of you, you wonder how long it will be until they become disappointed in you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, highly of you. Not really. Not really. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting in cyber conversation. Uh, yeah, sure. Drift away into daydreaming about various ideas or scenarios. Little bit. Yourself first and others at second. I don't think so. When you plan a particular daily routine, you usually just end up doing what you feel like. 
at any given moment. I'm in the middle. Mood can change quickly, a little bit. You often contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. <sighs> you often talk about your own feelings and emotions. <sighs> you have got de detailed education or career development plans stretching several years in the future. Kinda? Dwell in regrets a little? Well, maybe yeah, less on that one. Spending time in dynamic atmosphere with lots of people around quickly makes you feel drained. No. You see yourself as more of a realist than a realist than a visionary. See myself as a realist. I don't know. That's a tough one. You find it easy to empathize with a person who has gone through something you never have. Yeah. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than organizing consistent efforts. No. Uh, no. Well, maybe a little less. After a long, exhausting week, the fun party is just what you need. Sometimes. Frequently find yourself, is this so fun, guys? <clears throat> you should do it yourselves and see how you match up. This is not, by the way, there isn't wrong and right to these Myers-Briggs tests, right? It's like, this is just your personality type or whatever. So it's all about, hi, nice to meet you. I'm a INTJ. <laughs> you frequently find yourself wondering how technological advancements change everyday life. You sure. You all frequently though? Uh, whatever, I'm going to go with it. Always consider how your actions might affect other people before doing something. Yeah. Honor commitments you've made, even if you have changed your heart. Yeah. Rarely feel insecure. Uh, sure. All right. Here's what we got. E-N-F-J-A. What's the A? Ooh. I've, I think I got an um, E-N-T-J when I was in high school or college. E-N-T-J. So an ENFJ, what does that mean? So it means I'm a little more extroverted, which doesn't come as a surprise to me. Uh, mental energy is a little more intuitive, okay. Right? Is that how this is working? Yeah, yeah, okay, I see how it's working, okay. <clears throat> I was confused by the color. Because I thought, because the yellow side was, and then I thought it was like, anyway, you see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. It didn't take long. Nature. This is the one that confuses me. This trait determines how we make decisions and cope with emotions a little more feeling than thinking. That's actually surprising. I think that is um, a function of getting older. This tr tactics trait reflects our approach to work, judging and pros prospecting. Identity, assertive and turbulent. I'm right in the middle. All right, what do we know? What did we find out? Would you like us to email you? No, thanks. ENFJ, ENFJ. Oh, oh, what's the difference between the two? Assertive versus, it's the assertive versus turbulent. Sometimes the core personality traits help a type mimic what it means to be assertive or turbulent, even when they don't possess those specific qualities. This imitation, imitation can mute their identity differences. Turbulent protagonist outgoing nature can prompt them to act more boldly than the typical turbulent personality type. 80, let's just scan here. Where were we? 81% of assertive protagonists say their self-confidence is high, very high, 39%. Of, okay. We can go back. I'll go back to this at some point. I don't want to sit here and read this with you guys all on here. Oh, strengths and weaknesses. Protagonists, you may know. Hey, good company. Sean Connery. Wait, how did, how did Daenerys 
take a te- how did she's a character she's a she's not a person though she's a character in a book guess that's fine um all right should we just read this beginning part protagonists People are, are drawn to strong personalities. Protagonists radiate authenticity, concern, and altruism, afraid to stand up and speak when they feel something needs to be said. Hey. Um, all right, guys. So there we go. ENFJ. That's, the, that's what happened. That just happened. Shall we get back to the music? Shall we get back to the music? I think so. That's fun. All right. Oh, can can Myers Briggs tests change? I mean, I guess you can cheat your you can cheat your um, results and just answer what you think you should answer in order to get a certain outcome. That's kind of garbage, right? That's like going into the Harry Potter Pottermore test and trying to be a whatever, Gryffindor or Slytherin. Those are so, I mean, those are just like, uh, the Harry Potter test is the Myers-Briggs test, isn't it? Not, not exactly, but kind of, kind of. All right, here we are. Uh, Dan Mayo on the drums. I'm just gonna, I found a couple of, oh, I got some of these synths from Soviet synths from Mars. Um, I don't remember where the something from Mars samples from Mars is the name of the company. Um, they make some cool stuff, and one thing that I like is they break out the. Um, they're one of the companies that break out the. Uh, like when they when you get the packs of sounds, they've already like programmed the Ableton instrument and the Contact instrument. Like they give you the sounds, but they also give you the instrument that the sounds go in. And it just opens inside whatever, logic, contact, reason, etc. So that's nice. This one just opens right in here. I'll make this window smaller so you can see it. But like this string combo one that I picked right here, I just drag it down and there it is. Like it's just right in the, right in the thing, right in the window. So it's in multi-sample mode, which means it's got more than one sample. They sampled the layers of this this keyboard and these uh soviet synths, synths from mars this pack was like made from like these weird i guess like 70s and 80s um actual keyboards and they they're they're like discontinued and like hard to find and they're all like like basically sampler and uh keyboards and synths from like old eastern european or russian uh synths and they were saying like a lot of them are like, you know, since they didn't keep making them and they went out of production, they are like the upkeep, uh, a lot of them are broken basically. So they found good ones, sampled those and made a sample pack. Um, so this one is a string combo sounding very Blade Runner-y. Cool. Found this pad. Let's see here. Oh, this is quiet. Let's make this shit louder. Let's see here. I think I need to make it a lot louder. It's very quiet. It's kind of gonna affect that one. That one doesn't isn't quite the best it could be. These are not Soviet synths. This is just the electric piano I found. And then there's some subs. So we're gonna start with the string thing. I kind of want to go since Dan's thing is so like avant-garde. It's not that crazy. His thing's not that great. He can be way crazier than this. Um, but I thought something like... 
think not going f like um, four counts per measure might be good. What is our... Something like that. Let me see if I... Thinking that like speed is kind of cool with this. Uh, let me just get my quantized settings changed here. So this is like a three. But if I go from there, I'm just gonna loop this beginning just to kind of get a get a feel. up with the macros on this. this up an octave. Just curious. Is there a quick key for jumping things up an octave in Ableton? I can just grab it and drag it up. Shift and up. Thank you for the help. I don't know about that. I'm gonna turn it down and just make it kind of background. Differently, I see. 
Let's change that. All right, so this thing to me feels, this instrument was the one I said I wanted to like. I didn't like the texture of it. It's too bright. The other one is taking up a lot of that bright, magical space. Um, so this halftime plugin is interesting sometimes because it adds like a, basically um, drops you an octave and, and it does it, it cuts the dropped octaves by like on the loop or on the, on the grid. So by doing it processing make like having the the plugin process it it takes all the information the like sonic information and it it like degrades it basically <laughs> and it makes it it makes it sound I, I think it sounds dirtier it mangles it a little bit um Drums are like changing on a different thing, which is kind of cool, but kind of wonder if I should get back on the, on the top here. Oh, I see he's, he's in. How to approach this. Once we get a little groove here, it's gonna happen. I just gotta figure out my approach. Thank you. 
Oh, don't record over it. Ha! So, let me just record it. What you're hearing there, that that cutting those short, that's the hold pedal, which is my foot pedal. Oh, it's got like a that's weird. That's better. What if I put this here? Oh, whole different key. All right, we'll save this for later then. Because I like this Rhodes thing that just happened. Uh, which delay we want? Echo Boy? Valhalla? Let's do the Valhalla. It's so simple, just two nice little things. Oh, that's nasty, I love that. Let's turn Dan up. Oh. get these in the same key <laughs> so this one is here okay <laughs> there we go is the sub on a different note as well Okay, good. All right, good. So we're gonna change keys on the roads. Hmm. A lot higher. I'll drop it down. how that feels.
found a new downbeat. <laughs> a different downbeat than we were before. I like the downbeats here. On that hi hat. There's a human element coming in. You could hear him like go like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs>
Oh, that's interesting. This one came early. Gonna go back this far, early part. Little, his little fuck up is kind of awesome. I love that. Let's go to the next phrase and see what happens here. Oh, can you hear me in the background talking to him? Right here is where I talk. Oh. <laughs> oh. All 
right, let's see if we can bring in that other, this thing that I made earlier. I don't know if it works, but let's we'll try it. Nope. is like really the, his playing wants to go to the eight to the to the four count measure let's do something on this
stripping the fuck out right now? You guys are. All right, we're going to go back to the toppy top. The top top. Just get a bird's eye view. The tippy? out right now. I feel like this song is promoting drug use and I don't know how I feel about that. We need a little like loop, like a little, a little ar- arpeggio. Oh wait, this guy, this guy should just show up. Hold on. There we go. Then you'll be able to hear all the like stuff going on in the in, between me and Dan in the room. I was literally in the room with him. He's playing, and I'm like holding up tambourines and bells and stuff in front of him. To hit.
shooting a message to Mayo just to see what he's up to. Let's see what's up. Um, okay. I want to put some more sounds. The one that I pulled here was okay, but I want to... Um, I want to see if I can get a, get some other cool shit. Um... Oh wait, this that's why this is looping on a weird thing. This needs to go one extra. Mayo says, sure. Let's see here. Ah. Oh that little Square wave thing is kind of cool. Ay, 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 what I just do? Oh, that's cool. That sounds like an old, like, Casio keyboard. That's not the one. <laughs> so this is one of those ones that we can put it in loop mode and um get like a get get a proper loop out of it so if i zoom in here let me show you on the screen i can pull this up like this um so you can see how if i let me see if i can zoom can i zoom here so if I get it, if I start it right where the um, it like contacts the the middle, the the median line there, that's the start of my loop, and then the end of my loop, I do the same, find that same spot because this actually this sound seems to be pretty re rep repetitive, right? It looks like it repeats right on the um, on the like the same shape goes over and over, so. Now I've got it in loop mode, and I think if I, yeah. So now I can just hold the button down and it'll just loop that section over and over. You could also do something weird where, like if you wanted to, you can bring the end of it super close. And it gets a little like vibration. And that's like an intentional. <laughs> it's a little loud. Is that what you're saying? Is it too loud? Is it too loud? <laughs> Wait, is it distorting? Yes. Okay, hold up. Let me let me fix that. I think you're just coming in too hot on the. Uh, Better? <laughs> Sorry about that. It's fine in my ears, you guys. Shit. Hold on. So. Go 
back to our other thing. What was the other thing? Is this guy. So I think we recorded this on, like recorded it to tape, and I think the tape got a little, a little funny right there, which is dope. Something was a little grimy about the thing. I 
idea. What about?
shit got crazy. All right, uh, we'll bring it back. How far back? All the way to the top? Here it goes top. Should we add that?
feel like it should stop somewhere in there. It went a little long. <laughs> um, I think Dan tried to FaceTime me in the middle of all that. Mayo! Everybody welcome Dan Mayo to the chat. What's up, Dan? Uh-oh, can I not hear you? Oh. There you are. Hi. Yeah, what? What's up? Hang on, I'm gonna, I, I don't have this like connected, I don't have it connected to the, um, to the screen. Uh-oh. He left the chat, Dan Mayo has left the chat. Dan, can you hear me? <laughs> Do I have a bad connection? Um, hold on. If it's poor connection, it's always me. <laughs> Come on. I I have like I well because I'm like doing the stream and like um and doing this on top of it, and I have a house full of people who are all on the screen, so. Yeah. I wanna, I wanna be able to put it on the screen, on actual, like, so they can see it, but, okay. the, but the problem is, if I do that and it disconnects, then it shows all my recent oh. calls, and then everybody's phone oh, numbers, wow. and then everybody's phone okay. numbers on Twitch, so that's not a good idea. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to try it with Zoom eventually. How are you? What's going on? What's going on with you? What are you doing? I'm just in the balcony talking with you. It's 9 p.m. right now. So <laughs> are you and you're in Tel Aviv? Yeah. Nice. I used so with this thing, I don't think you saw it. I don't think you were on um, what, since yeah, I'm just wa watching it. So I used one of the one of the um, the drum things that we recorded here in L.A. Cause I was like messing around with the other one and I need, I need to like, Dan sent me more than one thing. Um, I needed that. This one was on a, already on a, on like a grid, like you played it to the click. So, um, the new one, the new one isn't right. It's just free form. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So the new one, I might try it with like no grid or whatever. Um, but this one I wanted to do stuff on the grid. And I noticed it looked like a, a very cool area of, of me playing. It wasn't like just a regular beat. It was just yeah. freestyle. No, I um, used the freestyle like sections. Yeah, it was amazing. Cool, nice. I was just watching it. It sounds amazing. I was I was calling uh, when you were, when you were playing guitar. So I'm sorry about that. But, uh, no, no, no. It's all good. What's <laughs> the what are you what are you doing? What should we tell fans? Like, what are you up to? Because I know you released like a thousand albums this year. Yeah, that's right. Nine albums. Yeah. So Dan released Dan because he is able to like just go in and just record amazing stuff first take. He did that and then built nine albums of stuff. Where can they find the, the stuff if they want to go listen to it? Is it on uh, streaming services or do they have to go on like... Yeah, yeah it's everywhere. You can find it on Spotify and everywhere basically. Mm -hmm. And I, I just released uh, uh, a new EP also that I wrote in like in these two months of like coronavirus. So nice, and that's on and that's on like Spotify and Apple Music and all that. Exactly. Yeah. Under your name or something else. Uh, the nine albums, it's uh, they're under half of them under my name and half of them under Tatran, my band. Yeah. And, and uh, the EP is under my name. Uh, it's called. Not a talker. Not a talker. <laughs> um, okay, so you guys go check those out. Go listen to that. Dan's like, you know, very prolific. Um, it's good to talk to you, man. Yeah, how are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. Doing these the streams every day are a lot of fun, and um, you know, it's in the afternoon. I'm doing doing some different like different music, different projects, and like helping my kids with school stuff. <laughs> And uh, yeah, no, all good. Are you guys on? Oh, in, in, in like a new studio. The studio looks amazing. I, I would love to have you here if you ever come to LA. I record you. Be a dream, of course. <laughs> what what are what are the um, 
are they doing like like lockdowns and quarantine and stuff in Israel or what are the rules in Israel? Are you guys having much problem with like coronavirus and COVID-19, whatever, all that stuff? Yeah, two, two weeks ago it was bad, like we had lock, complete lockdown. Yeah. And now everything is, is actually pretty cool. I just went to the beach yesterday and everything was chill. And it seems like everything is getting back to normal uh, every day. What are the rule? Are there any rules in terms of like what people are allowed to do on the beach in 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 Tel Aviv? Yeah, you should like uh, 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 like stay away for like at least six meters uh, from other people uh, other people on the beach. Like yeah. You should, like, just and you should uh, be not more than I think uh, seven people. Like not more. A group? Not, oh, in your group? Yeah. Yeah, nice. exactly. The group shouldn't be more than seven people. Do and you know? Do you know anybody who caught the virus? No. Nobody. I don't. I I know people. I have lots of people who who know someone else. Like it's like one degree of separation, but I don't. None of my immediate friends or family have got it or got it. Yeah, you know. The same, the same. The same with me. Yeah. Exactly. But there's a couple. I mean, yeah. some of the stories of the people that our friends of my friends are some of them are bad like one person is a doctor and they were working in the hospitals and then they got it and then they're like they had a blood clot and lost and they're blind in one eye like bad really weird bad stuff but the people everybody else, and then other people have like no symptoms at all or minimal symptoms and then they get over it yeah you know? so it's so weird That's what I yeah, it's it's very weird. Everything everything is so confusing because yeah. you know you hear sometimes it's like regular flu, and sometimes you hear like it's it's so bad that you shouldn't leave the house. Yeah. Or, I don't know. I mean, I think everyone is basically confused right now. So yeah, it's the same here. It's the same here. I mean, basically everybody's like it's because there's such a a, a variety in the outcome of what it can look like and what it can how you can you know. It could be like nothing or you could be dead. Like it's a very wide uh, <laughs> spectrum of like outcomes uh, if you do get. And then, and then like, you know, the infection rates are around like between like zero and what is it? Five percent. Right. So it's like that's like it's that's manageable. But not if not if people are like really going to the hospital. Um, well, cool, man. Are you? What do you have coming up in the next in the next few weeks that I could check out, or somebody else can check out? Um, do you have more of those drum sessions, or are you just posting stuff on Instagram? Yeah, I'm just posting stuff on, on, on Instagram and just playing drums and yeah. you know posting just beats and stuff. Yeah. Uh, for for now, I'm just like uh, writing a lot of music and and just I don't know what's the future it's gonna be like. So right. I'm just <laughs> confused. Well, let's do, let's do, this is a good, good first, uh, first attempt. Let's do some more. I want to try swap some files with you and do some more stuff like this. Oh, yeah, for sure. So if you get some cool stuff that you really like, um, on, you know, in your sessions, like send them to me, send me something. Definitely. I'll share it with our folder. Our Dropbox, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Folder. yeah. Yeah. Cool. Sure. Awesome. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Say hi to the, the family and everybody. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye, Dan. So that, Dad's, that's Mayo, M-A-Y-O. Uh, on Instagram, he's Mayo Drummer. Um, and Dan is Dan's the best, man. So talented, too. He's just, he's the dude. I'm going to chop this outro down a little bit. Just make it a little, I want it to end a little sooner. Let's see here. How does it end to end? Okay, so maybe two go rounds of that and then we're done. Let's see what happens. There we go. That's much better. So my weird last note here. I did like a minor note and it didn't work. So let's do that.
let that fade out. And that'll be the end of it. All right, um, I'm gonna fade that there. I gotta cross fade it over here. Okay, so this is the uh, echo guitar. So on that guitar, I'm using, um, just for those that are curious, to play guitar, engineer stuff, I'm using, um, let's see, that's a Strat through a Big Sky uh, pedal, which is made by Strymon, and then a full-tone Octafuzz, and then into basically like a clean channel on the um, Fractal. Um, I th feel like that, that whole vibe felt, that felt cool. I'm going to go from the top on this and see what other instruments we need.
couple good parts. I wanted to bring this in a little later. Maybe I'll move this whole thing over a little bit to this. <laughs> move here. sound. I'm going to give it, I'm going to take it back to here. We'll probably use a little, I wonder if, this is a vintage bird. Smaller. And the filter. background. Let's see it. 
get in the way of the guitar because the guitar is filling a similar frequency even though it's just building a little bit maybe at the end we'll bring up the frequency Says, oh. Another track. Another track.
guys we went on a journey today and now we're back you feel good it's nice right i'm gonna um why don't i just take all this stuff grab all these put them in a group what kind of compressor i'm gonna put a little compression on and turn it down um, I think I'm going to use this one. This the, this the glue. Give it a little glue. I'm going to turn it down too. We can have a chat. Have a little chat. And we'll loop it up. We feel good? All right. This is a very chill start of your week. I hope you had a nice, chill experience today. Maybe you got a massage. Maybe you uh, took a nap, took a Monday nap. <laughs> it's nice to chill, tune in and chill on these, in these stressful times. Um, I don't know, man. This this uh, this Mayo drum stuff is dope. I think we might have to do. We're gonna do this again. Jump into some questions um, and maybe a select some stuff for our mashup. Oh, we should do that, huh? Let's select some ma a mashup for tomorrow. What do you say? That feel good? Yes. All right. I'm mixing them up. Should we choose two? Why don't I do this? Why don't I choose one and then we'll see how it feels. And if I want to, I'll choose a second one to mash it up with, okay? I'm not looking. I'm just gonna shuffle them up right here. And the, oh, just as a reminder for those of you guys who are just tuning in or don't, haven't seen this before, the Bowl of Destiny is where these style suggestions go. The style suggestions are from fans on Twitch 
Uh, if you watch on Twitch, you can get Shinoda Bucks just for watching. Uh, you can gamble them. You can click on, if you see a treasure chest on the screen, you can click on that and get bonus, chip, bonus bucks. And if you earn enough bucks, you can select, you can choose a song, a song theme. You can choose an art theme. And if I pick it out of the bowl, that's what we'll do tomorrow. So the first winner of our, um, of, of a style selection out of the bowl of destiny comes from Zana 3 Zana suggested Syrian Dabka music which I don't know shit about and that is going to be really hard we are going to have to mash that up let's mash it up with something because I don't even know I don't know where I'm going to get I certainly can't play it I don't have the instruments because I looked those up and I was like I've never even heard of those instruments. It's amazing. Great. I hope I can like find a good like royalty-free sample uh, for that one. We'll find out. Woo! And now our should I do I have the do I have the authority to it's my fucking stream. I can do whatever I want. I was thinking the one I picked was LV Bombs 50s, 60s doo wop style hip hop. So, are we doing doo wop? Syrian Dabka doo wop? I mean, I guess. I don't know how those two things go together. Shit. All right. I'm tempted to choose a third one and just be completely crazy. Now, let's just do the two. Today, this, this is gonna be hard enough to do just the two. So we're gonna mix up Syrian Dabka music with 50s, 60s doo-wop style. Uh, they said doo-wop hip-hop, so, I mean, what is that, like Lauryn Hill, maybe a little Amy Winehouse. <laughs> I don't think I can do three. I'm scared of that because then it's going to be Final Fantasy mixed with those two things and then it'll just sound like shit. Like it's not going to work. All right, so we'll do these two tomorrow. Um, questions. Go to questions on the... Uh, who are questions submitted by folks who are on Twitch earning Shinoda Bucks. Jade was the one... Who? Uh, oh, the bottom, the first one on my list was Jade. You were Jade LP was the one who suggested the Myers Briggs. So shout out to Jade. Um, P R three Desh, Pre Desh. Oh, Pre Desh from South Africa. Okay. Uh, it's my birthday shout out to Troy. This is a late birthday shout out from last week. Um, Chloe Diosha. And all of the workers fighting on the front line. Mike, tell us a drunk story or post. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so a drunk story. Shit. I don't know if I have a drunk story that's as good as the ones you've already heard. Um, I can tell you one thing about when I, if I drink to the point of, like when I was in college especially, and I, if I would drink to the point of like kind of like, passing out or whatever which wasn't that often but um i i would like i sleep by the way i sleep with my eyes open and i sleep i oftentimes i'll sleep with my mouth and my eyes open so i'm like it's very creepy but because of that like people would make a my friends would make a make a habit out of whenever i was i passed out of like pouring stuff in my mouth because I do it with my mouth open and usually almost and there was never anything gross never anything terrible thankfully I didn't have friends that like poured hot sauce in my mouth or poured like you know awful things in my mouth but usually it was like more drinks and like little they take like a little straw and like like put a straw full of something else and I would just do this 
and they thought that was hilarious. Like a like a like a baby. Um, I should look through these and see if there's any other birthdays. Hold on, let me just do that real quick. Um, because the birthdays, I feel bad when I hit those hit the birthdays, um, super late. So let me just check real quick to see if we've got any birthdays. So funny. I feel like I we're all I'm always getting birthdays, birthday wishes for other people, and then now that I'm looking for them, I'm not getting any. Katoda said, Bobby went blonde, Stryker went blue. When are you going to bring back the blue hair? Uh, Bobby Hundreds went blonde, uh, Stryker uh, from K-Rock just dyed his hair blue. I mean, I wasn't thinking of dyeing my hair, but I keep getting, you have these moments of boredom. LA's still in pretty much like full-on quarantine, so... Um, I mean, I'm getting, what was the, the things that people are doing like on in quarantine? Um, I watched Tiger King. I, I did a foot peel. So all my skin is currently falling off of my feet. We tie dyed some stuff. Um, these are all like, I, you know, stuff that like you see it on like Instagram or whatever. And you're like, oh, that seems like a good idea. Let's do that. The one thing I haven't done that I saw a lot of other people doing is making bread. For some reason, a lot of people are making bread. And I haven't, that seems like such a random thing to be popular. Um, but my brother made bread. Um, I saw him this weekend. We're, we're slowly like opening up our circle. I saw my brother and he brought bread and there was like, oh, it's this is really good. What? Where did you get it? And he made it. And he said, it's not that bad, not that hard to make. So I might jump into the like, to that whole thing. I know I'm late on that. I'm also not caught up on Last Dance. That Bulls, Michael Jordan Bulls documentary. Um, but that, I mean, that story is incredible. So, okay, so let's get to a couple more questions and I'm gonna break out of here for some lunch uh ali on a kite says what nature sceneries have i seen that have impressed me most nature sceneries if you ever come to the u.s if you haven't actually you know what i'll say even if you live in the on the you know live in the u.s um i grew up going out to the four corner states which is you know um new mexico uh, Nevada, not that, whatever. What are the four? What are the four corners? I'm bl blanking on that right now. Is Utah a four corner state? And I don't want to look up a map. Utah, Nevada, New Mexico, and and Florida. Yeah, Florida. Yeah, that's the one. Colorado. Colorado is. I don't. I don't. Is Colorado really a four corner state? Oh, yes. Okay. So, hey, there's some, hey, let's not, let's not be nasty in the chat. I see some nonsense going on. You get kicked, you get your ass kicked. Don't be rude to other people. Um, yeah, so four corners, that area out there, like, you know, you've got, by the way, we went to like the Grand Canyon and some of those, but, but Stone Canyon, Death Valley, which is not there, but in, you know, it's not LA. So headed out that direction. Death Valley is an incredible stop. Stone Canyon. Um, uh, what was the other one? Oh, we went to Monument Valley, watched the sunrise there. Monument Valley is a spot where they used to shoot a lot of the old, um, like Westerns and stuff. So when you see that, like, like. Um, desert, flat desert landscape and those huge 
mesas on the horizon. That's Monument, usually Monument Valley. Um, spending the night there and waking up to that sunrise of, with that, those mesas is incredible. It's a beautiful experience and you can't capture it in photos. There's no photo that can capture how cool that is. So uh, that's my, I mean, that's my recommendation. Um, if you ever are out in this side of the world. Uh, Maria Asmon says, she's from Lincoln Park, Mexico. Um, what's the process of choosing an album title? Um, usually, I mean, like we just kind of like throw ideas out and there's usually like a momentum to it. It's like they'll get a couple good name, a couple reasonable names and then a whole bunch of screwing around. Um, at least with the Lincoln Park guys, that was always the thing. Like it would very easily and quickly devolve into like dumb jokes. Um, and yeah, I think that with that, that's usually the, the process. On my own, it's usually like I'll have a great thing, something I think is a great name for something, and then I'll sleep on it and I'll wake up and I'll realize that it was a stupid name. And the more times I wake up and go, oh, that's not that dumb, then it's probably gets closer. That's how I arrive at an actual name. Naming things is so hard. Um, let's see here. What have you always wanted to do, but you haven't? There's places I want to go. You know, like, like, like the pyramids and, and see the, like, like, I'd love to go to Egypt. I'd love to go to uh, Machu Picchu. Um, well, it's mostly places like that, like, that I've, I would like to visit and I haven't visited. Um, I think that's probably my answer. Those are the two that come to, to come to mind first. Uh, Ema Live for Chester B asks, "What have you always wanted?" Wait, that was the I didn't say your name. Oh my bad. That was from Ema. Is it Ema? I don't even know his name. Um, the Lamer T W. How asks. How did the remix of the Enjoy the Silence, Depeche Mode uh, yeah, remix come about? Um, I think they were doing like their, like a remaster compilation greatest hits thing. And they asked me to do it. Um, I don't know how my name got added to the mix, but it was, I think I, think I had mentioned a bunch of times that I, you know, love Depeche Mode. Um, and... I didn't meet them at the time. I just did the remix and sent it, and they managed their management sent back a note saying, "Oh, this the guys liked it." We never met, and then I saw them play. Like 15 years later, I saw them play. That's a rough number, but I saw them play in L.A. and uh, I met I met the band then. And they were they were great. They were sweet, and they realized they were saying they said like, "Oh, thanks for doing that remix. Sorry, we never like." <laughs> uh, Lincoln Park fan Andrea asks are there musicians you would love to play with in the studio or even more or even one day on stage it's a good question um, in the studio I've never played with Travis Barker like played played with him Travis is so dope um on stage in the studio you know who i've run into like a bunch of times it'd be the weirdest collaboration ever but this this track made me think of it it's thundercat <laughs> so random i've i've touched i've like run into that guy and touched base with that guy a bunch of times just in completely random places like for example one time we were in tokyo in and just walking around at night and we saw these guys get out of a car and go into this little club and all these people were crowded around the outside and I was like, oh, I wonder who that was because it was, it was in Tokyo and I could tell it was not a Japanese group that walked in 
And I think one of our guys, I think their drummer recognized Dan Mayo and the two of them started talking and he said it was Thundercat. And then we went in and they were like, yo, and they were like so cool. And like we hung out for a few minutes and that was like the, I think that was the second time I've run into him or whatever, cross paths. So I, I don't know what we would make. You know, it's almost like this, like doo-wop, dabka music. Like it's almost that weird and random, but he's obviously crazy talented. Um, let's see, get another question. Luna Dragons says... How is your experience doing the Worlds on Fire video? Do you want to do more animation? I love the Worlds on Fire video. Super fun. And like in terms of like an animated video, like really fast and really low budget. So uh, to do something with a little more time and money would be really cool. I don't know what that would be, but um, I had so much fun doing it. And you guys, I, I grew up like loving animation and anime. I went to school for illustration and I would like... I don't know a ton about um, about like animation, like doing physically doing animation, um, but I would love to do it. Um, Danielle 0317 asked, "What was it like working with a lonely island?" It was mostly just emails and stuff. Like they didn't really reach out. Um, kind of, you know, whatever. But. It was, uh, we love the track, but the, uh, things in my Jeep track. Um, Tam K asks, says, as a second generation Asian American, grew up in a small town where racism was a prominent issue. Thanks for being a role model and making me feel cool amongst the other kids. Uh, hey, all right. You're welcome. I don't know why, I feel like um, when I was growing up, we had like, there weren't that really any awesome Asian role models. And um, it was all very like, if you think about like John Hughes movies, I think Asian, some of you don't know this, but like the Asian community, um, you know, his movies had a lot of really bad racist Asian stuff in it. And that's like long duck dong and all that shit um so you know you, we had like bruce lee i mean like bruce lee's like not japanese but um it was like yeah there weren't that many i had like mr miyagi like what did i have i didn't have any there were uh, at, at some point it was like james eha from smashing pumpkins and um, I'm thinking of somebody else in that era who was like, I'm trying to think of somebody else from that era who was Japanese. But yeah, it was like, you know, it, it, when I was little, there was like the John Hughes stuff and there was like these like Asian tropes. And now it's, you know, so much it's it's a lot easier to find asian role models um i mean we were you know if i went to if i went to little tokyo and saw a japanese japanese um culture pop culture or things to watch or read or whatever then it was i i it was more tangible but it was also in japanese and i didn't speak japanese right so um George Takei, yeah, George Takei has always been the shit. He's the greatest. Um, so yeah, it was like when people started, like when I put out, started doing like the Fort Minor stuff and all that, and I got a, a, a bunch of love from the community um, for like a song like Kenji and, and even using shakuhachi on uh, instrument on um, nobody's listening like people responded to that and um, I always thought that was pretty I didn't expect that to be as big a deal as it was it was cool um, okay I don't know this name J-M-D-U-I-T-S Lincoln 69 
says, what are your favorite three movies that you could watch over and over and not get old? Um, favorite three that I could watch over and over? My favorite movies, um, I love, I can list off a bunch. I love, um, I love The Shining. I love um, Seven. I love um, The Usual Suspects. I love um, Akira. I love. I love Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, Godfather. I actually love Godfather 2. I love Godfather 1, but Godfather 2 is even better to me. Um, Star Wars. I like a lot of the Star Wars movies. Um, the Matrix, yeah, Matrix is a good one. Um, I'm an Empire, Empire Strikes Back fan, hell yeah. What are the greatest movies that people don't, well, think about that, like, what are some of the best movies that people don't ever think about being like, oh shit, that movie was incredible. Shaun of the Dead is one. I like that, I like Shaun of the Dead. In terms of anime, Princess Mononoke is insane. Um, Ninja Scroll, insane. Um, man, Ninja Scroll is nasty. Oh, Spirited Away. I haven't seen I haven't seen Spirited Away in so long. I should go back and watch that because that's a classic. That's a good one. Um. Dr. Sleep is a recommendation in the chat. I like it. You know what's dope? Being John Malkovich was so dope. That was such a weird film. Oh my God. I That's one of those ones where it's like somebody was like super, like almost like super high and was like, you know, it'd be funny. You know, it'd be a great movie. But those, there's sometimes there's those movies, almost like um, The Big Lebowski, where you're just like, whoa, how did you come up with the idea? Like, how does anybody bu like fund that movie? Oh, I Heart Huckabees, nice one, man. Oh, okay, in terms of comedy, one of the most underrated comedies is, you guys don't, probably don't even know this movie, um, Grandma's Boy. If you haven't seen Grandma's Boy, that's like the ultimate stupid stoner comedy. It's so good though. I mean, it's no like, um, what was the one you guys just mentioned? You mentioned another one, Office Space. Yeah, legendary. Um, but if you had to choose between Hot Tub Time Machine and uh, dazed and confused, and Grandma's Boy. I'd go. I'd go Grandma's Boy. Super Troopers. Fuck. We could make the best in this chat. We could make the world's best um, movie list. Must see movie list. Um, Hot Tub Time Machine. Right. <laughs> I actually liked Hot Tub Time Machine. I didn't hate it. All right, uh, let's get some more questions. Lorenzo VY asks, what makes you feel like the song you're working on is going in the right direction? It's just gut, it's just gut. Sometimes I'll do it and I'll work on something, I'll work on something and I'll go, this is going in the right direction and I'll come back to it and say, nope, I took a wrong turn and I gotta go backwards. But that's part of the process, it's fine. These streams might be a little bit misleading because what I make here, it's generally I just go on a path and I just go until it feels like, okay, I got a thing and it's, it's, it feels good. But I might come back to any of these and be like, oh, this one section was so great. Um, never know. Uh, Satman88 asks, what's my favorite non-music related activity? Uh, probably snowboarding. I like snowboarding. Um, I like games where you can make a game. 
Like, I love Mario Maker. Love Mario Maker. Um, yeah. I also like, I like Minecraft a little bit. I, I, don't, I, haven't touched, I haven't really played. My kids and I will do Minecraft mornings sometimes on the weekend. We'll just do like a family Minecraft game. <laughs> make make little buildings. My, my son is teaching me, is always teaching me how to uh, do redstone because he's a redstone master. I do not, I am not good at redstone. But I can build the shit out of a castle. Um, made at what? Made at which to ask a question? That's a great name. Hey, Mike, I'm using the quarantine to finally learn how to play guitar. Do you have any tips that could help? Nope, I don't, because I am not good at guitar, but that's okay. I'm good at making sounds. I play by ear 99% of the time. You know what I should do? I should get better at guitar over quarantine. But I'm also... I'm already trying to get a little better at the drums. I'm terrible at both. I'm better at guitar than drums. I can play guitar. I know, I'm being... I know, I'm being ridiculous. But... Um... You know what somebody told me? Here's your here's your tip to get better at guitar. Put it, don't store it in its case. Don't put it away somewhere. Put it on a stand in the room, like where you will see it all the time. Cause that, for me, I will see, I will see a guitar sitting there and I will pick it up. Same with the piano. Like if the instrument is out in the room, I will go touch it. So having instruments out and around is it that that'll help. Cause it'll just you'll be attracted to go over and do it. Um, Avid Lea says, uh, well, okay, she has a two-part question, but I'm gonna answer, I'm gonna answer the first part. Um, I don't know if I can. I have to check out, she whispered at me. I'm gonna have to check that out and see if that's, if it's, if it's chat appropriate. Um, a Alfie says, in your past streams, you have been a robot dressed as a monkey and on several occasions danced when the beat was funky. How do you explain this? You know, Alfie, can I live? Just let me live my life. Don't question me. I know you don't mean to, but I feel like I'm, I feel like you're judging me and um, it, it doesn't feel good to feel judged like that and I realized that my in interpretation my um, perception of being judged creates the feeling of judgment that you could be doing nothing and I could be feeling judged and the feelings are my responsibility but at the same time I wanted you to know that the thing that you wrote um, inspired this feeling of judgment and so it's up to you whether or not you want to change your behavior um, <laughs> I'm just fucking around uh, Amy Diane says zebra corn and Manhattans for the win and I watched them all. Thanks. That's very nice. I, I have to say that I was on a zebra corn and Manhattan's kick um, last week. We bought some zebra corn. It was delicious. I'm currently on a... Um, what's my current mood is... Um, what? Cookie dough ice cream, I think. Oh, you know what I love? We had some... Uh, little cheesecakes little like a in a in a muffin uh paper paper the little you know what i'm talking about little bite-sized one single serving cheesecakes and on top um like a cherry with cherry glaze and somebody said 
uh, what I was that I was talking to said, oh, cherries on cheesecake. I thought you'd just do strawberries on cheesecake. If you haven't messed with cherries on cheesecake, it is a it is a vibe. Uh, Fen Risa Kashi. Fen Fen Risa Fenri Sakashi. Tom. Your name is Tom. <laughs> Tom says, Hey Mike, have you ever wanted or, to or thought about working with some traditional Japanese sounds like the Koto or Shamisen? Um, I did, we, we did, uh, I've used a couple things. I, like I mentioned a minute ago, Shakuhachi on Nobody's Listening. Um, I did add, I think I added some Koto on something else, but it might have been a sample that didn't sound like Koto. Um, so maybe, maybe we'll do it. Somebody could recommend, somebody could su suggest a Japanese day. Let's do that. Put it in the bowl. The bowl is, of destiny is calling for you. Oh, if you guys haven't checked out the, um, new, uh, bowl of destiny and, uh, Shinoda Bucks teas on, the, in the store, go to store.mikeshinoda.com. Uh, check those out. Got some, some, uh, face masks as well um real simple stuff i and but like i said before they're all like limited 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 edition so they're gonna be gone this week um hey mike is it possible lp saves us all says hey mike is it possible for you and joe to collaborate on something oh that'd be great it's a good suggestion i'm gonna hit up joe Soon we'll do it. I'm actually just writing myself a note to hit up Joe. Why isn't this one a send? What the hell? My phone's acting crazy. Let's see here. Hey, cupcake. Hey, Cupcake Jr. is back in the mix. Has a request from me. Alexa327, Nelly, Hannah Shinboon, Jade, Rashida, Garby, Monica, Maria, Garby. Thanks to you, we all met and fell in love with each other, so we're all going to get married. Could you officiate for us? Thanks. Um glad you guys are all getting married um this is a very strange forum for a multi-generational po polygamous polygam polygamy polygam polygamitarian relationship it's a strange place for you have to have all met and um i'm glad that I could provide the platform for you guys to get your your uh, relationship started. Congratulations! We'll do a we'll do a ceremony in the chat. Um. Oh, Michelangelo PL says no roads left across the line. Blackbirds WWDK were scrapped from initial 17 on the album Minutes Midnight I guess Minutes Midnight was it what was the fifth song we always have lots of songs that get scrapped from the from an album so I don't know the, fi the fifth got me I don't know I wish I could tell you um, probably something that's unreleased. Uh, I tater tater tot. I tater tot. Um, says, could you make it to where we can buy your C Jam digital download and the money goes to charity? This will help. I um, I want to put the the songs up on streaming 
They make it really weird and kind of ha- not hard to donate, but they make it weird to like stream to donate because a lot of there's a lot of hands in the pot in the in the in the um, if you want to have if we want to get a, a if you want to dive deep into a subject where you could potentially get a super crazy migraine headache and then also learn something look at how uh, song royalties are distributed and collected it's crazy I'm surprised I, I doubt that anybody really completely understands how it works because the problem is it changes it's there's all these rules from country to country and region to region and some countries give like breaks and benefits to things that were recorded in their jurisdiction and other countries don't like they don't co- like um, track their royalties very well and it's a fucking nightmare and so you add to that the idea that some portion of that money is going to go to a charity and it just gets super complex really fast so generally what people do is they make their money from their songs and then they donate some of their income so if you see on my Tiltify page, I started our campaign with a $5,000 donation. Um, I'm currently doing a campaign for all of you guys that are uh, interested. I'm doing a, uh, a gift to whoever donates the most money. And I, I would prefer you guys don't do it incrementally. Like Don't do $5, $5, $10, $100, blah, blah, blah. I think the top donation is currently 500. I don't know. But if you collect money from your friends and from whoever, the top donor is going to get an original piece of art from me to you. Um, I'm going to send it to you. I don't know what the art is going to be. I just know that I'm going, it's going to be hands created and it will be, uh, sent to you after the um, fundraising is over at the end of this month. So tell your friends. And by the way, like if you and 10 friends donate and then you win the thing, like you're going to have to figure out, it's on you to figure out how you're going to share it or whatever. Um, but the top donation right now, I think is 500. Um, so do with that what you will. If you have a rich uncle hit him up because the money's going to go to direct relief in COVID-19 uh, relief efforts and they need it Cold Front 3 asks what was the label's initial reaction to a thousand sons were they nervous about the direction had they learned by that point to trust the band's vision yes to both they were I mean, when we played them the catalyst and said we didn't want this to be the first single, they were like, uh. <laughs> but we knew we had like waiting for the end up our sleeves. So we were like, look, we're going to get to this one. We just want to come out with something really like startling first. And then, then you, we go with waiting for the end, which is a more, um, probably a bigger single. So they went, they were like, okay. And we had a lot, there were people in the label, at the label who were like, oh, I just think it's a bad idea. I don't think this guy. But at that time, I think you, it was, you know, you could do it that way then. I don't think you could do that today. I don't think it would work. That, but when we released that, it, it worked. Um, Alt Disney Mama says, what's up? I wonder, just wondering if you could do a little studio tour. Um, maybe at some point. I don't think here on this stream, but at some point. Um, It's a good suggestion. The original one asks, or says, we've seen you use different guitars on a single track, Fender, SG, PRS, etc. Could you share with us the criteria where you... uh, based on which you choose which guitar. Um, 
I just have a little bit of a sense of what they're what they sound like, what the character of the guitar is, and the combinations of things in the chain between the output of the guitar and the input of the computer. You know, what things I can put in the chain that'll have a certain uh, aesthetic. You know, shoot. It'll be. It's a sound thing. Like you gotta know what the sounds are and where and how they, how to use them. Um. Yeah, it's it's mostly experience and and tinkering. Um, like for example, I use the Strat a lot because I like the sound of it. It's a. Um, what kind of pickups do I have on it? Well, regardless, that Strat, I love the sound of that Strat, and I love that it registers in my head as a little more indie rock and a little more lo-fi, as opposed to the PRS, which is very warm and versatile and controlled guitar. Um, it's all, PRS is also really great for like a super clean tone and a super heavy tone. Um, so, does that make sense? The SG is a rock guitar. That is a rock beast, um, for example. So when you want it to go a little more old school rock and roll, I've got a Les Paul and an SG that I, I go to usually for stuff like that. Same with the bass, though. I've, done, I've got two basses here. I've got a five-string Ernie Ball and a, and a four-string uh, Fender Precision bass. And the P bass is a little more... Uh, classic, a little more indie, um, it, classic and or indie, and the the Ernie Ball is more like rock. So uh, a couple more, and then we'll get out here for the Shinoda. Says, hey Mike, my kids Noah, Mia, and Gabrielle say hi. Hello. We would love to hear about times you and Chester had fun or laughed really hard. Oh man. Marcy is the at one who asked that question. Um, we laughed, laughed really hard. That's like all the time. Um, a lot of that, I have to say, a lot of that stuff made it on to uh, LPTV. Um, like all the goofy characters and voices and all that stuff. Like those, we were always like just being ridiculous. Um, and lowbrow ridiculous. Like it wasn't weird. It wasn't smart humor. We were just being ridiculous. We had a few times when we were doing like jokey songs. Um, any of you guys ever hear us do "Burn It Down" in like a reggae style? That stuff is just always so stupid, but it would always get, make us laugh. Um, Barb J H says everyone has always wanted you to take your shirt off. Why not? Do you have nipples? Yes, and that's the problem. It's, it's because of nipples. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not your, um, your pinup calendar. <laughs> that's my hands. I'm not your pinup boy. Um, Moon HMZ says, I listen to a lot more pop now at, than I did as a teen in the 2000s. Halsey, Billie Eilish, indie pop. How do you feel about pop music then and now? Pop music now got better than like the late 90s, early 2000s. 2000s pop I was not feeling. Now pop music is like, it's a lot more, there's a lot more variety. There's a lot more of it too. Um, but I like, yeah, I like Billie Eilish and Halsey. Air dope. Mitchell McCormick uh, 05 says, are rhyme schemes still a focus when you're writing a verse? Uh, yeah, but not as much as like the words, but you gotta, if you're rapping, like choosing the right pattern is important. It's important. Um, All right, cool. Let's cut it off there. It's one o'clock. Been on for a while. Um, 
I appreciate you guys. Thanks very much for tuning in. Um, I'm going to look through for see if we've got any uh, Shinoda Bucks redemptions. Um, and thanks for watching. Um, raid. It's raid time as we break out of here. Um, currently... You say Mice and Men is is streaming? Who is streaming? Do I not? I don't follow Mice and Men. Who's streaming? Let's look. Let's look. Let me just find a good channel to raid. Of Mice is their channel. Uh-oh. They are. They're on, aren't they? All right. I'll follow them and raid. Let's raid Mice and Men. <laughs> I love it. They got 30 people in the chat right now. Let's raid them. Okay. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thanks for checking out the um, wild track today. Shout out to Dan Mayo. Go check out Dan's music on your favorite streaming or music purchasing service. Um, you know, in terms of like instrumental, um, talented instrumental artists out there, Dan is so underrated. He is incredible, you guys. M-A-Y-O is the last name. Go check him out. This drum track that I built things on today is from Dan, the session that me and Dan did. Shout out to Ethan Mates who engineered the, sh the session. I think Josh Newell was in there too. Josh, shout out to Josh who always does such a great job engineering with us as well. Uh, we're going to go raid Mice and Men. I'll see you guys tomorrow for a LV Bomb Xana 3 Doo-wop Dabka music style hip-hop session. Bye. Are you raiding me as we leave? Oh, man. Okay, no, we're raiding you. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Mice and men, raid. Goodbye. <laughs>